at the obvious, what does this game mean to you personally? Uh, personally, you know, there's there's a lot of uh, to state the obvious great relationships with people I've, uh, I have with people out in LA, and uh, but as far as the game goes, you know, I think there's uh, two separate things that uh, worlds that I'm living in right now, and and it's a football week for me, and I'm excited to be in a Thursday night game, it's Thursday night setting, divisional game, uh, just like last week was a, it was an important game, uh, no different this week as we approach this this one coming up quick. What do you think is the tempo that you guys went with in the San Francisco game? I thought, you know, once we got, you know, through those first few drives where, again, it's always going to come back how, to how efficiently we can play on some of those early downs. Once we were able to uh, create those explosives or create that early down efficiency, then then the tempo was able to pick up. And, you know, I thought when Alex Collins made that, that first catch there, it kind of got us uh, out of that little bit of a lull right there. And then being able to get into a little bit more tempo and then Russ doing a great job uh, with some different looks that came up and presented themselves and, and executing the plan. You were four for four in the red zone last week. What do you need to have to make sure that you've got that effectiveness every time? Well, it uh, starts with number three, because uh, I'm sure you guys saw uh, two of those, and, and one for sure was uh, probably one of the more impressive plays I think I've ever seen in person. So just his ability to extend the play and in the red zone, his ability to keep his eyes downfield. And if stuff doesn't go exactly as planned or exactly as uh, as it was drawn up on a piece of paper, his ability to improvise. And then, you know, all the players being on the same page when he does get into that mode, you know, Freddie being at the right place at the right time. But it doesn't just happen by accident. It happens because these guys work at it and are prepared for it. Uh, that's a big part of the red zone. And then again, continuing to do a great job running the ball and staying committed to it down there and then winning one-on-one -on -one matchups like DK was able to do uh, on his one-on-one -on -one matchup to, to get a touchdown out of that. Uh, so just keep playing the, the good, efficient football down there and then, you know, letting, letting, letting Russ do his thing. When you take a look at the pass rush for the Rams, you've obviously seen it for so many years. It's easy to say Aaron Donald makes that work, but what else is it about that pass rush that might get overlooked? Yeah, I, I think... Uh, you know, Eric Henderson does such a good job with, with getting that rush plan going, uh, you know, with, with Leonard Floyd and, and with Donald and with all the guys. They have a lot of different guys that uh, uh, they can get into that rush plan uh, and they work, like to work their games and, and create havoc up front. So just understanding what they're doing, knowing, knowing what's gonna, what we can expect, having a plan and, and being ready to counter them. What have you noticed different as a Raheem Morris defense than the Staley Rams? Yeah, I think, uh, you know, maybe a little bit of uh, his, his fingerprint on maybe some of the pressure packages. But uh, by and large, you know, see a lot of uh, a lot of good carryover. Uh, you know, it was an effective defense, obviously, last year. They did a heck of a job and uh, really uh, transitioned into this season, seeing a lot of uh, a lot of similarities, a lot of carryover. Uh, and the similarities doesn't mean easy because they do a great job uh, blurring the defense and, and disguising a lot of looks, and, and they've continued to do so. Yeah, you know, he's, he can really play all, all seven spots. You know, in the in the back uh, of that, you know, he might might line up at three technique. You never know, but uh, no, he does a great job. I have a ton of respect for him. He's a he's a great player. He can impact the game in so many different ways, playing inside, playing outside. Uh, so you know, you got to know where he's at, how to how to uh, how to respect him, know what he's getting into in, in those different uh, alignments, and 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 doing our best job we can at handling him. Does does that amount of carryover and your familiarity? I don't want to say it give you an advantage, but does it make the preparation? more straightforward i don't want to say easier but just and yeah, nothing, nothing's easy and you know maybe uh you know the thursday night kind of you know puts it in such a uh, fast forward tempo as far as the preparation goes so you don't really have a t uh, you know a lot of time to stop and, and think about you know what you know how would this be different than going against another opponent uh you know they've like i said they've done a great job they've mixed and matched you know while the structure's the same you know moving bodies around moving players around uh Trying to trying to make it hard on an offense, they've continued to do a great job at that. So really, just having an understanding of it, and then and then seeing what it uh, what it looks like on Thursday night. You told uh, Sean you were coming to Seattle. Did he have any sort of like uh, no, I got to go against you, you know, twice a year now? <laughs> yeah, no, we, we both talked about that because you know there it's it's a great friendship, and he's meant so much to my my coaching career. He's helped me tremendously, uh, really helped me to get to this position where I'm at now. Uh, so I have a ton of appreciation for him. And you know, there's that there's that part of it where you know, we are such great friends, and I have so much respect for him and and what he's done uh, for me personally. But then it, hey, there's also that competitive part where that that friendship also leads to just that. That, that competitive nature when you're going against each other. And, you know, I'm sure I'll talk to him plenty throughout the uh, course of the year, like we've done in the off season or earlier in the, in the season. But, you know, this week is uh, it's not about that. It's about the, the teams competing and the, and the players that are going out there to play. You guys are, are going hurry up and it's not like you're 
like a true two minute situation where you're trying to snap the ball quickly but on that first drive where you got to the line quickly mm-hmm. Wilson had time to diagnose everything are you in his ear and talking to him up until the cutoff or do you just let him go uh, different t- yeah, not the same on every every part of those uh, scenarios I guess would be the best way to answer that you know the one thing with, with Russ is that he has such a good ownership of of the uh, the run game the pass game all the different moving parts in there uh, you know so he has his different tools that he can get to it at different times in the game which you know he's been able to get to a few times during the uh, the course of the year and create some great explosive plays with that tempo how much more do you feel like you have at your disposal than what you've shown through four games uh, I don't know. It's a it's a week to week league. So each, each week we'll have our different plan. Uh, you know, it's hard to say because it's still a players' league, and and so as the as the season goes on, as our as our players get more and more comfortable, and you know, d- uh, each week, you know, whether it's injuries or whether it's different uh, defensive schemes that we're going against, you know, different uh, different guys might be more uh, viable options or or might present different. Uh, different ways that they can help us on offense. So I think just continuing to uh, stay on top of that, staying on top of, you know, what do we need to do the next week? And, uh, you know, that'll evolve as the season goes. What goes into having an offense that creates natural opportunities for yards after the catch for your tight ends? I think uh, you know it starts with with those guys' ability to understand coverages, recognize coverages, uh, and then you know like Russ doing a great job with that ball placement and putting it in spots where those guys have that opportunity to catch and run, and then something that we you know practice and and try to take from the practice field uh, every every day that we're out here to the game field, and the guys have done a nice job with that. Whether it's uh, catching the ball and transitioning vertically into the defense, or if it's a horizontal route, working on that catch transition, it's so important. And then like uh, like. Alex has been able to do in this past game where they're working edges on guys, you know, whether it's a, uh, a you know, pass to the flat or it's a run, you know, those are all uh, similar fundamental parts of football where they're working their open field running and, and just having that, that training throughout practice and then obviously letting their natural talent take over. Russ said earlier today that he felt like you guys have been pretty effective on first and second downs, but over 50% of your third downs this year have been seven yards or longer and mm-hmm. your conversion rates are 33%. What have you seen that has really caused the biggest problems for you guys on third down these first four games? Yeah, I think uh, the, the biggest thing for us is it's, it's always going to come back to that efficiency on first and second down because if we can have as many of those third and six and less, you know, just like the, the rest of the NFL is, you know, you have a better chance of success in those scenarios. And I think for us, you know, when it comes to those third downs in particular, just keeping a work on that execution, you know, getting, uh, you know, getting the ball out of our hands, you know, getting our getting ready to uh, to pick up all the different pressures and stunts that, that come our way and continue to do a good job with it and knowing that it's an area that we need to continue to strive to improve in. And, and but it all starts with that first and second down execution so that you know a lot of our drives that that end up in points you know it's almost you know you're limited those third down uh, chances throughout those drives and it's uh it's no coincidence that a lot of those times those can lead to to touchdown drives or field goal drives when you can eliminate that part of it Absolutely, yes, yes, yes. We can stay, you know, efficient with those runs, you know, getting those four yards and plus, uh, you know, rush attempts as we're going into a game, you know, and staying into those second down and, and mediums or shorters, you know, it helps out. And then, you know, transitions usually to those third down and shorters, which are more manageable things. Uh, you know, I know getting into a, a, a third and short this past game really allowed us to create an explosive there and, and get some momentum going offensively with a great play by, by Russ and, and DK on the crossing route. So, you know, just those opportunities where we can keep ourselves ahead of the chains is really what we're looking for. And it starts with the run game and being efficient in those areas. Facing these guys for the first time, might it help that it is on a short week that maybe less time to over things like what are they thinking that I'm thinking or anything of that nature? Yeah, I think that you can put a lot of stock in that and uh, still got to go out and, and it ends up being about execution. So I know there there are some similarities. There's some things that, that there's familiarity with, but at the end of the day, it's still going to be a game of execution on, on Thursday night with a quick turnaround. What's the most valuable thing you learned from John McVay? I think his ability to communicate uh, with everybody and, and really tried to uh, grow with him and being around him and, and seeing how he was able to, to communicate with all the players, the coaches, the, the uh, staff around the building in such a positive way. Uh, it's really something important that, that I'd like to try to think that I grew from being around him in that regard. Yeah, the philosophy that Brandon had and that Raheem kind of has there now that like you stop the pass first, almost mm-hmm. inviting run to two yards and shells. How unique is that compared to the other DCs are doing around the league? Yeah, I think uh, you know it does show up similar to some of the other structures around the league now more and more. 
where uh, you know you get some of that that shell coverage and and uh, playing things deep to short. But I think uh, you know you still have to stop the run, and they do such a great job with it with those guys that they have up front that really enables them to play and 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 have that softer coverage on the back end. And they've got some great you know great players that are able to to make that scheme come to life. What they're asking their D linemen to do, considering that they're kind of built top down. Yeah, I think they, they have to show that nice consistency, and they do. They do a great job of it, and, you know, obviously it starts with Aaron, and, uh, you know, he's a disruptive force there, and, and, you know, his ability to play both the run and the pass, play on the front side of a run, chase down runs from the back the back side, you know, it's it's, it's unique, and, and so we know how to, you know, we know he's there. Uh, it's something that you got to be aware of, and then, you know, feel like we have good players that, you know, can compete with him and play at a high level and, and match his intensity. Got any more time with your defense this week? Yeah, I don't, you know, uh, th this week was a tough week, though. You know, there's, uh, you know, I think just throughout the course of camp, throughout the course of, uh, you know, as the season's gone, I think that's uh, been been one thing that's shown up. With maybe if there are some similarities that where that crossover happens, uh, but you know, this is a uh, quick uh, quick turnaround week where we, we sleep fast every night and get ready to roll on Thursday. This is your first time that you've gotten to be a coordinator with this short rest. Obviously, you've been a, a, been a different position coach for that, but what's been the biggest challenge so far as far as being in this position and only having a couple days, even with your familiarity? Yeah, I think just the uh, understanding that there is that time restraint on there. So, you know, you have to be, you know, decisive. You don't have that extra, you know, Tuesday where you can, hey, maybe go back through some things. Uh, you have to feel confident in what, what uh, maybe some gut instincts are on the first part of, uh, of, of the plan and, and go with it. And then if there are stuff that or if there is things that do come up throughout the course of the day, there still is maybe a little bit more time than you think because you get so much, uh, so much walk through time, so much time to maybe tweak things or stuff that, that pops up that, that might need a little bit of adjustment there. So, you know, it's that balance of getting that, that, that plan in initially and then using the walkthroughs and being flexible and being willing to communicate like our guys were to adjust some things that might say, hey, we might do this a little bit different uh, so it fits a little bit better for Thursday night. Thanks, Thanks, All right. Thank you.